Hi, my name is Lisa. Welcome to my makeup YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I put up the colors in this palette, especially these greens and these blues, and then these shiny, shifty greens and blues, Terra Moon Cosmetics, and I paired it with the very basic Tom Ford Nude Dip to give it a little bit more vibrant look, but then I subdued it a little bit with the Nude Dip so it looks a little bit more natural. All to go with this beautiful Lily Pulitzer Winter Dress that I got um, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> and to match these cool earrings. Look at these earrings, they're so fun. I love Lily Pulitzer, like all my stuff is Lily Pulitzer. So if you'd like to see how I put this look together, then just keep watching, don't forget to subscribe and like. <laughs> okay, so really quick, I just wanted to show how these colors look in a variety of light. Excuse the mess on my desk. You can see uh, the first four colors are the green Terra Moon colors, the next four colors are the blue Terra Moon colors, and the last four shades are Tom Ford's new dip that I use to kind of subdue it a little bit and make it into a more cohesive, really pretty look that I could just wear out. I'm like stuck with just staring at this. <laughs> like this is so pretty. I want to start off with a Charles Ray Happy Love because my lips are a little dry today and I already put my foundation and base on. Then I'm going to now put on my primer. I know I've heard some people do not like this primer. I do like it because I can blend my shadows really easily and it has both a, a concealer, primer, and a powder. And I use it with the Mario brush, the dual ended brush. So I'm setting that. Now I am going to go in with something neutral, anything neutral work. And in between when I'm doing my color changes, I'm using this. Okay, I'm gonna start off my look by using this Dark Pearl Color Chameleon by Charlotte Tilbury. And I like this because it just blends really well. And I could use this and just go right out of the house. Just a little of this under the eye, a little mascara, and this lip gloss, and I feel good. <laughs> I feel like I've got myself together today. Um, but when I'm wanting to do something extra special, then I'm gonna go into all these extra stuff. I'm gonna go in with this Thrive Cosmetics. It's a little brightener just for like the inner corner. Um, it's a nice shade as a base for any kind of future indie shadows that I'm gonna be putting on. Now I'm gonna go in with Nude Dip. This is just to give me a nice wash of color um, before I start putting on the bright colors. It will um, make the look not so vibrant and crazy. It gives it like a more neutral and then the fun stuff underneath it. So you'll have to bear with me. You just have to trust the process. I'm going to start off with this color right here. It's uh, the second to the darkest shade. And I'm putting this up in my upper eyelid area or eyelid area. This I'm using as a transition shade. Now, interesting enough, um, I did not know what transition shades were until um, one of my friends had purchased a makeup session for me and taught me how to use, how to like really do makeup a little bit better. And she said, you should always use a transition shade, which is gonna be um, not the lightest color in your palette, but like maybe second to lightest, something that is closer to your skin tone. So when you put in the darker shades, it's gonna blend really well. So now I'm going to go in with this shade right here, which is the next darkest, and I'm going to put that a little bit lower. So I put the pink going up into here, and now I'm doing the darker shade up in here. And I'm going to look down now so I can really see what I'm doing. And I'm putting this more like, since it's a nude dip, it's a nice neutral color that will allow me to then put my vibrant colors and not look too crazy. I am in a more conservative household. <laughs> and I have two boys and a husband, so I don't really have girls here telling me that, hey, it's okay to be vibrant and crazy. I have the opposite. I have guys saying, you don't need to wear makeup. Don't put on makeup. <laughs> okay, now I'm going into this darkest color right here, this brown. And I'm just going to be putting it on the edge, kind of giving it that beautiful cat eye look and over and Bring it up just a little bit in here to kind of really define the area. I feel like it really needs to be here the most because it really, when I'm looking back at my videos, I really like having that kind of darker shade right here. And I'm not doing my lid yet because I don't need a lot of stuff on my lid. Now for the fun stuff. I'm going to be using this palette that I kind of put together here. And the way that I put this together, put all these green shades together, um, based, I believe this is based on some pictures that I found on Terra Moon website um, and they had different swatches of 
um, colors together and I believe these were on one arm these were on another arm so I will go back and research this and I'll put that if it's accurate <laughs> in my window above okay I'm starting off with this color called fourth dimension and I am putting that on the inner part of my eye I'm gonna go with green and blue Actually, I'm going to pull this in a little bit. I think I'll do the blue more on the outer edge and on the bottom. This green is really pretty. It's very vibrant. Now, one um, lady had watched me put this on on one of my other videos. Um, not this specific color, but like these neon type colors. And she said I did not need to mix it with my primer. And she didn't think I would have an issue. Because some of these do say that they're not intended for the eye area, which is very confusing, right? And why we have eyeshadow that's not intended for the eye area, but what I understand is that it just means that it can cause some staining. Um, and I'm going in with this color right here. It's going to kind of show how it shifts. Um, even though these say that they're not meant for the eye area, it normally means that it can cause some staining. Not that it's like necessarily going to cause issues, but that it can cause some staining and maybe some irritation. So I did test some of these on my arm. I did not have any irritation, so I think they're safe from that perspective. And the other ones that I've tried so far, like the pink, neon pink, um, it did not cause staining for me. I think maybe because I have a good makeup cleaner um, and I use tape before I get all the stuff off so I don't get glitter everywhere. Uh, and I use a primer and powder before I put it on. Now this color that I'm using is called Just a Phase. It's just a matte and it's a little bit darker than the fourth dimension. So I'm gonna be adding that on the crease more. I do have this habit when I'm doing my eyes, I'm lifting my eyebrows up when I'm doing my shadow. This color is called Snow Globe and I have not used it yet. I am very excited to try it. It was one of the things, like I put all of these colors on um, on various <laughs> documents when I really want this one, there's a sale. And I forget when I picked this up, it wasn't at this last sale, but it might've been last year. And this is the first time I'm getting to actually use it. I'm putting it right underneath the darkest area, the crease. I'm just gonna make the eyelid look bigger right under that dark area. And I'm also gonna put it over the Thrive Cosmetic white part that I put over here because it's really going to pop like this is popping popping and I can always go back in with a new dip to make the um, hold up look a little bit more neutral this is so pretty and it is matching my outfit perfect now I'm going to go in with this now I've had a mess with my I just want to show you this I've got glitter all on the back of this thing you can see to try to figure out what the name is because I've dropped these so many times. I'm very klutzy. So I'm now using Skywatcher on the bottom lash line. And I'm not gonna use this pencil brush yet. I'm going to be using a smudge brush. I think what I'll use is, this pencil brush seems to work really well. It's the crease piece number two, brush number two. I'm gonna use that on top of this. I know when I go in with these dark colors, I probably should have used a little bit smaller, a smudge brush. I'll have to clean this up just a little bit, so hold on. But that is really gonna, it's gonna be beautiful. When this all comes together, it's gonna be beautiful. Okay, so I cleaned up the bottom edge with my concealer, this Charlotte Tilbury concealer, and this Sigma P87 Precision brush. It just makes it very easy to kind of like stipple in. I feel like you could use this brush for a lot of different things. Um, so now I'm going to actually use the regular brush that I would use, this, this little um, smudge brush right here. Let's see what it looks like. Just a nice flat little brush. And I'm going to be using this color. Oh my gosh. I have a mess with my Terra Moon stuff. I need, <laughs> I need some more Terra Moons and I need another palette. <laughs> it's just a mess. Okay, I'm using a short shader E20 with Terra Moon's Aquarius Moon. Putting this right under the eye here. It's gonna be really sparkly. And I'm just doing it like in the center to really make the eyes pop. Now, I am going to be using this really dark shade. <laughs> I have a mess all over my fingers. It is a mess. Okay, I'm gonna be using um, Terra Moon's Arabian Nights now. It's just a dark matte uh, navy, kind of like a blue-green navy, but look at how it like goes with this outfit so well. This one, I mean, really they all do. I'll show you in a moment, but they all go really well with this outfit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just kind of like going here and I'm going up so that I have like that 
cat eye going and it's going to blend and what I'm going to do is just kind of pull it in a little bit so it's not so stark. Because one thing I notice in my pictures is that sometimes um, if I don't pull it in just a little bit, it can be look really like just a strong line on the edge. It's not kind of the look that I really wanted to go for. I just kind of want to pull that up. Same thing on the other side, kind of pulling this up, you know, as a cat line and then moving it over just a little bit so it blends. This is coming out so pretty. So, so pretty. So this color is Space Baby. Let's kind of see how it shifts. It shifts. <laughs> and um, what I want to do with this is put this a little bit also on the center, just a little bit more to kind of lighten this area up. And it's going to look so vibrant. Like doing something amazing under the uh, lower line really can make things pop um, and bring things to life. I noticed that because I can do the same look and then not do anything on the under at lash line. Just do like a, just leave it with the Charlotte Tilbury uh, dark pearl, and my husband would not even really notice it so much. But when I start to use these <laughs> these things on my under eyes, um, my un, my lower lash line, that's when he starts to tell me I look I don't look like a real person. <laughs> But I love it! So it's okay. It's okay if your partner thinks you look like an alien. Spices things up a little bit. Now I'm just kind of cleaning up now. So I'm going back in with the Tom Ford. Going in with this color here. And I'm just bringing the Tom Ford up in here. Just to kind of bring the whole look together. And make it look just a little bit more neutral and natural. So it's kind of blending like a classic look with the new modern era of indie eyeshadows and I feel like the whole thing comes together so beautifully. One thing that I did not do, okay, I am so guilty here, I did not mix this with glitter primer. I use a glitter primer, it's really going to show up a lot more. Glitter primer, I normally don't show myself putting on glitter primer. Now I've seen some people use um, a variety of different types of shadow bases and these colors come to life so differently and I do want to get some of those. So I'm going back in with radiation on top just so we make sure that we get this color in. Like look at that now. It just pops so much more. This is over the top. Now you can really see it though. I'm just going to kind of bring this in here a little bit. Now I've seen these pictures, okay. I've seen a lot of pictures of um, this stuff on arm swatches and I've been dying to see it how it looks like on the eyes. Now give me a moment I'm going to clean things up a little bit by using my Kelly Smash box and kind of diffusing the edges and everything. Okay so I'm diffusing the edges now just to make sure it's all nice and clean. I am so much loving this color so I'm going in with the light yellow in my Kelly Smash box. It's funny I know that I'm going to have to edit a lot and I keep forgetting, like, I don't need to be showing everything because I can just put it picture in picture in my editing box. And it's probably better that way. But sometimes it's nice to actually see what the shadow looks like on a video. You know, like when you're picking it up and you can show the shifts. Or even putting it on the wrist on a video might make a difference on how you perceive it. If you think that the dark blue and green are a little bit too much, um, you can always subdue it by going back in with your neutral colors and going in like with this dark brown on the edge and then you can just kind of clean up a little bit making it dark here and just you know put bringing back in something more neutral which is why it's nice to have a neutral palette with your ND shades because sometimes we just want to bring all these colors in and just be done but it can be a little bit too much sometimes when we're actually out and about. Okay, I think I am done with the eye look. Let's just add a little bit of extra mascara and let's put on some blush and sculpt the face just a little bit. Oh my gosh, like putting this, there we go. That was a little bit much. Oof. Okay, this Thrive, this may be the trick, okay? The trick is, <laughs> I think I just discovered, is that put on your mascara with, like, if you're using Thrive, this seems to work. And then do your makeup, and then just put one more lash uh, coating on, and look at how thick and dark they look like I have fake eyelashes on with this second coat after it dried. It's, they look really, they look like um, I'm wearing fake eyelashes from here. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. 
I'll have to see. When I look back at the camera, I'll have to see if it comes out as pretty as I seeing it from my mirror. <laughs> and I'm just going to put a little bit of this blush on. I'm using Rare Beauty Bliss and I put it directly on here. I'm just kind of touching, touching. That is really bright. And we'll put some up here. Okay, I guess we just spray it. And um, I didn't really put any lipstick on, I just put the gloss. Okay, I'm using um, Gucci They Met in Argentina lipstick. It's like a liquid lip. This color is so pretty. Um, they Met in Argentina, beautiful, beautiful color. And I guess with going with this thing, we should do the Gucci blush. <laughs> blush on top of a blush. This is what it looks like. It is so beautiful, although I know Jeffree Star axed it. He said it is too expensive for what it was, but it is a really pretty product. Okay, I've added so much color to my face, and I'm wondering how it's going to come out on video, because um, from here it is so vibrant. I'll have to take some pictures so you can see if it doesn't quite come out with this new software that I'm using. Um, I'm basically using OBS on my iPhone, at, so I can use my iPhone as a webcam and I'm hoping that it comes out as well as using it you know as a regular camera so I hope you enjoyed watching this video I had so much fun playing with this and I have been dying to use it uh, it took me a long time to get all of these colors that I've been wanting to play with and it's funny because when they come in you'll get a lot of different colors and then I have to go back through and figure out which four were supposed to go together and um, you know based on the website <laughs> I spent a lot of time trying to figure out because there's a whole bunch of different arm swatches and not all of them have the same sets of colors that people have chosen I think maybe what happens is the cosmetics company will send free samples I guess to some people that uh, make videos of specifically their types of cosmetics and then people like me look at these videos and like oh that's so pretty I love those arm swatches um, I want to buy them. So we go and buy them and then we don't really know what to do with them or we might buy the buy a bunch of them and then all of a sudden be like, well, which ones were supposed to go with which because they all come in at the same time and you'll have 20 shades and you have to go back and research. So I would, um, just in case the site no longer had the pictures, I would take screenshots of all the arm swatches and then I would write them down um, which ones went with which color. So when they came in, I knew which ones I wanted to put together in my shadow box. And then I look here and I'm like, look at this, like these greens and these blues, they go so perfectly with this lily print. It's spot on. So I did put the greens and the blues together um, in the same palette and you know also I see some purples in there as well. So I have the purple shades and I don't remember what this one is. This is more blue also but it's a different type of blue. Uh, more blue with like a pinky color that's just purpley blue. So then that's kind of how I made this palette. I go by um, arm swatches and by the prints that I wear and I try to find the colors that I think will go well. But what is missing is having something neutral maybe to tie it together so it doesn't look maybe so crazy. And that's where these little quads come in. I know that ColourPop, ColourPop has a nice neutral palette, like a couple different neutral palettes like Bare Necessities and Cold Stone Box. I'll probably try pulling those out as well, but um, I've had these Tom Ford quads for quite a while and I want to make sure that I use them because they were kind of pricey. But if you have a ColourPop like Pair Necessities or Stone Cold Fox, that would work well too, I think. And then um, Blend Bunnies also has palette blends, I think it's called, and it has uh, a lot of different colors that can go well like with, for the mattes that you might need um, for the neutral side. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up.